Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe, power plant, and avionics certified. The date today is July 16, 2016. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss aerodynamic wing lift, the lift in pounds force generated by airplane wings. There's nothing really magical about how airplanes fly. Again, it's just applied physics. So we start with the term aerodynamics. This is the science of harnessing mechanical force by means of airflow speed differential over a airfoil structure. Uh, the airfoil will be explained in a few minutes here, but first, uh, when you have higher speed airflow in relationship to ambient air, it will exist at below atmospheric pressure. Conversely, if you have lower speed airflow in relationship to ambient air, whatever that might be, the pressure it will exert will be above atmospheric pressure. This is an observation in nature for which can be taken advantage of for building a structure that can fly through the air, such as an airplane. So wings, airfoils, propeller blades involve both a Bernoulli and a Newtonian force component when they develop lift or thrust. So Bernoulli force is operating by the concept of pressure times area, and Newtonian force is operating by the concept of mass airflow times its acceleration. All propellers and wings include both types of force components. So here we have an airfoil. This is the profile view of a wing. It is kind of this uh, teardrop-shaped uh, teardrop uh, structure. This would be the side of the airplane wing as in the wing rib. So this is where the shape causes this speed differential of the air. As you notice, the curvature is a lot higher in its camber compared to the lower part of the wing. So when the airflow mass reaches the front of the wing, the leading edge of the wing, it will split into two streams one going over the top of the wing and the other going at the bottom of the wing. So what happens here, because the distance is a lot longer on the top of the wing surface because of the curve, the airflow will want to speed up and accelerate in relationship to the ambient air. And likewise, the uh, lower or less camber or less distance on the bottom of the wing will cause a speed lower than the top of the wing at the bottom of the wing. So this here would represent the Bernoulli force component. This is allowing some lift to generate because of the speed differentials due to the structural shapes having different distances between the top and the bottom of the wing. But the most important part of the Bernoulli component is that it creates a boundary layer of airflow that wants to stick to the wing because of this vacuum differential. This is what allows the wing to retain an aeroelastic form over the wing in the form of airflow. This is so important because you don't want the airflow to separate from the structure. Then it will not lift anymore. So this is a pictorial description of Bernoulli force component an action which is reacting to the shape of the wing. Here would be more of the Newtonian force component because here the wing angle is changing positive to the relative airflow direction so there's an even lower speed at the bottom of the wing in comparison to the top of the wing. So the angle of the airfoil when it changes positive in relationship to the airflow speed, it's further elaborating on a speed differential. There's going to be even higher speed on the top of the wing of the air and even lower air speed at the bottom of the wing 
in comparison to just a straight level zero degree angle of attack. AOA is the aeronautical term for the shape uh, airfoil makes to the oncoming airflow. So this is both Bernoulli and Newtonian components. So you're going to have one lift wanting, you're going to have two different lift vectors, one Bernoulli and one Newtonian, but then you have a resultant vector sum lift in the direction. And of course you're going to have airflow accelerating to the trailing edge of the wing, which means you're going to get some thrust in the form of lift at a resultant force somewhere in this direction, and then you're going to get a pressure lift somewhere in this direction, so the vector sum is an overall lift in this direction. So that's all the aerodynamic lift principle is about. So if you were to put a bunch of these airfoil ribs across on a straight wing and then reinforce it with spars, you would get a wing airframe structure for, for which then you cover up with an aluminum sheet metal skins or any other type of covering that has good tensile strength. And then when it's finished, you get this wing shape. So that's all the aerodynamic wing lift is about. It's just taking these rib shapes and connecting them together and covering them up with a wing skin. So the next thing you do, if you want to actually figure out what kind of lift you're going to get, is you need to consult the uh, airfoil specifications data. This is all published by the aeronautical or aerospace engineers that designed the airfoil along with the aerospace scientists. They certify a certain airfoil species. Here we're going to be using the NACA 4412 airfoil. And these are all the published graph data that gives the coefficient a lift at the given angle. So if we were dealing with a 5 degree angle positive to the airflow, we would just trace that up. We can see it's about 0 0.9 coefficient of lift. These are all the Reynolds numbers, uh, limits, from the front of the wing to the tail of the wing, which could be used for limitations data as well. But we're going to focus just on the coefficient of lift, because we need to know that at a certain airspeed and at a certain angle of attack. So in this case, we're going to use positive 5 degrees. So the next thing you do once you get this data is you use this formula here, the aerodynamic uh, wing lift in pounds. This would be the coefficient of lift times the air density in slugs per cubic foot times the wing plan form 2D area in square feet, like looking down on it, times the air speed over the wing in feet per second. And then we square that. These four divided by two will calculate the aerodynamic lift in pounds. So to finish off this lecture, we'll use an example. An airplane with a straight rectangular wing plan form is using a NACA 4412 airfoil for which the coefficient of lift is 0 0.9 when at an angle of attack of positive 5 degrees to the relative airflow. The total 2D wing plan form area of this airplane's wing is 150 square feet and the wing angle of positive 5 degrees takes place when the airspeed over the wings is 90 miles per hour. How many pounds of wing lift is this airplane's wing developing? So assume that the airplane is taking off from a runway which is 1200 feet above sea level elevation and is operating in 67 degree Fahrenheit air temperature. So again we calculate the air uh, atmospheric pressure in pounds per square inch between sea level 36,089 feet above sea level, it would be this formula here. So all we do is enter the 1,200 feet above sea level, divide it by this value, subtract it from 1, and whatever you get, then you take it to the 5.255876 power exponent, and then whatever you get here, you multiply it times 14.7. So 14.07 PSI is the atmospheric pressure when at 1,200 feet above sea level. Then to get the air density in slugs, you first 
should take the outside air temperature of 67 degrees Fahrenheit, add it to 460, so you can get the Rankine absolute temperature, and in this case it's 527 degrees, Rankine is equal to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So then what you do is you take uh, this value here, 29, times atmospheric pressure, we calculated 14.07 times point zero. I'm sorry, 0 0.031. This quantity then divided by the ideal gas law constant for air, 10.73 times 527 degrees Rankine. So the air density in slugs per cubic feet is 0 0.00223 slugs per cubic feet. Next thing we do is we take the miles per hour, we convert it to feet per second. That's simply 22 fifteenths fractional ratio times miles per hour. So it's 132 feet per second is equal to 90 miles per hour. Now we got all the data to make this aerodynamic lift computation. So all we do is just use this formula again. We got all the data multiplied out. So we got 0.9 coefficient of lift times 0 0.0023 slugs per cubic feet air density times 150 square feet of wing 2D planform area times 132 feet per second airspeed quantity squared. These four multiplied out divided by two translates to 2,705.1 pounds of lift. This particular wing at the given flight parameters is developing 2,705.1 pounds of aerodynamic lift. Thanks for watching this video lecture and have a great day.